touchdowns in the field goal. <laughs> yeah, that's five plays right there that yeah. made the game. Yeah. Like, dude, are you kidding? Welcome to Men of Steel. We're live here at Black Watch Sports Performance in Birmingham, Alabama. My awesome co-host with me, Simeon Castile. What's up, everybody? Hope everybody's <laughs> having a great uh, week so far. We're going to be recapping the games from this weekend. Um, some great football be uh, was played, obviously. Uh, what game are we going to talk? We're going to tackle first. Well, we're going to start out with uh, Georgia defeating Kentucky. That was big for this past weekend. That set, you know. That was big game for both of those teams to okay. decide who was going to win the East. So did anybody actually think that Kentucky had a chance? Did you? I, no, I, I didn't pick them. <laughs> of, course, <laughs> of course you didn't. I yeah. don't think anybody outside of Kentucky uh, picked Kentucky to win that game. Georgia, I feel like, showed Kentucky that, you know, Kentucky is improving, but there are tiers, I feel like, to the SEC. Um, obviously, Alabama being at the top, and then Georgia is right there. Um, Kentucky is cl trying to close the gap. Um, they've made some improvements this year, but obviously they're, they're not um, on the level of, of a Georgia or Alabama. I think they still have a couple of years of recruiting that they have to do. Yeah. Just playing Georgia and seeing the type of athlete that Georgia has and the depth they have, yeah. and Coach Smart uh, – coaching with Coach Saban, and, and I think Kentucky's on the right road. Yeah, they're on the right track. Like you said, they need more depth and, um, you know, more experience playing in those uh, big games. Big games, yeah. Yeah, so um, no surprise there, Georgia, you know, rolling rolling over Kentucky and taking care of business there. Uh, the second uh, game we're going to talk about is F Florida. Man, what happened to Florida? Well, that doesn't surprise me. Really? No, not if you watch. We played Missouri. Of course. Um, I was impressed with the quarterback and the, just the physical size of their receivers. Drew Locke is – I tell people I think he'll be playing at the next – you'll see him in on Sundays. Well, yeah, he'll definitely be playing on Sundays, but I didn't think that – I mean, number one, Florida was playing at home. And I just did not think that Missouri would come in and beat them as handedly as they did. Um, Have you seen the re the Missouri receivers? Yes. Have you physically? I mean, they, they are they physically they're tough. They can present a tough matchup, matchup for, problems. I mean, for I, for defense. I understand that, and I mean, but Florida's defense had been playing well um, up until that game, and I. Just, I Feel like they just laid an egg, uh, <laughs> honestly. Uh, well, I, I, I definitely didn't uh, foresee that happening. Thirty-eight, seventeen. All. Yeah, that's not a good look yeah. at home. Yeah, and they were they were ranked number eleven at the time. So, yeah, that was a, that was a <laughs> bad loss. Bad loss. Yeah. Bad loss. Drew Drew threw for a three touchdown passes. Drew Locke did so. Yeah. I, I just I felt like that was from us playing Missouri that that was a possibility. And, well, I mean, obviously he's going to be a top quarterback, I feel like, when he get, gets ready to uh, get drafted. But I, did, I, did, I just didn't see that happening in Florida. So, um, Auburn, man, I just don't know what to expect from this team. Um, I mean, I really don't. Uh, they seem so inconsistent. People just, I mean, they on the Gus bus one week, they off the <laughs> Gus bus next week. Um, and I mean, I for me, you know, it really just depends on week to week which which team is going to show up. Well, I, I I picked that one last week. I felt like Auburn would win that game. Uh, we we had played Texas A and M, but I yeah. just felt like Auburn Auburn was the better team. And playing there at home, 
it was going to be tough for Texas A&M to but come in. The majority of the game, Texas A&M, I mean, Texas A&M was winning 24-14 to 14, um, going into the fourth quarter. So, I mean, my whole thing is how do you lose a, I mean, a 10-point lead, um, I mean, really down to like seven minutes left in the fourth quarter, uh, A&M was still up 24-14. to 14. They threw a pick, and, I mean, from there it was just all Auburn. It's called lack of focus. <laughs> You're not focused each and every play, every down. Then uh, you, what, what you saw uh, Saturday of them being able to, within just two or three plays there in the, in the fourth quarter, come back and, and win the ball game. Just yeah. lack of focus. And I believe with that win, um, to Auburn sitting at 6-3, and three, um, they got Georgia coming up uh, next week, but I think they put them back in the top 25. I think they're sitting at 23 or 24. Yeah, I think they rank like number 23. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Um, so, no. go ahead. Number five, Michigan, uh, playing Penn State. That's rivalry. And uh, were you disappointed in, in the – Didn't seem like much of a rivalry. <laughs> uh, the score to that one was 42 to 17. Seven. seven. Oh, seven. 42 yeah, to seven. sorry. 42 to seven. And so, I mean, ugh. What was, what was impressive about Michigan? Michigan's defense, I mean, they're really playing, I mean, they're really playing good ball all around. Uh, from the front seven to the secondary, uh, they're doing good things on defense for sure. Uh, but I just didn't see that Penn State, I mean, in a game as big as that one, you would think that they would show up and at least be able to get, at least be able to get, you know, uh, more than seven points. Well, I I, uh, I felt like Michigan, you know, they went into the game and they're really um, just making a statement. They they lost last year to Penn State. Just you know, several games they lost last year. They they they're really motivated. Anytime you beat a team, then the next year you really have to realize, okay, that team is really going to be motivated, and um, it really takes uh, you taking your players taking their game and motivation to, to the next level. Yeah, and, uh, you know, Penn State, they didn't do that. <laughs> <laughs> they, they didn't do it. Also helped Michigan, This this uh, the way they played helped them as far as uh, the rankings Ranking coming out this yeah. week. Yeah, because they're sitting at number four now. Yeah. So um, Notre Dame was four last week, right? So they're three. Um, they beat Northwestern. I mean – 31-21. 31-21, not really an impressive win in my eyes. Um, I mean, if if we could play anybody in the playoff, I mean, I wouldn't mind us playing Notre Dame. Uh, I just don't feel like Notre Dame. I mean, if we were to play them in the playoffs, I'm not really sold on Notre Dame yet. Well, you know, they say Notre Dame is the darling of uh, college football with, with, with the media. and uh, So I think that um, – I think they have a better team this year than uh, – you know, just a few years back when we played them in the championship game. I think this team is a better team. Overall? Overall, I think they're a better team. Well, time will tell. Yeah. Time will tell. Um, and obviously Clemson has been just destroying people the last, what, three or four weeks. I mean, I think their point uh, margin of victory is like 50 points. I mean, last week they beat uh, Louisville 77 to 16. Yeah. I mean, 77 points. In one game, come on, Louisville. I didn't. I mean, I didn't realize that. I mean, Louisville was going to be that bad, or I guess a lot of people didn't realize that Clemson would be that good. I think that uh, Trevor Lawrence has really done a great job stepping up and playing as a true freshman, and yeah. uh, their uh, their passing game. I think you know, Coach Sweeney's done, always done a good job with that, and. Uh, this past week, their running game, I feel like they really uh, they worked on that and you really saw that their running game has is, is come along. Yeah. But still, I don't care who you're playing. 77 points? That, <laughs> man, that's un- That's basketball score. That's what I'm saying. Come <laughs> on. We need a little bit better effort out of y'all, Louisville. But, I mean, Clemson's been rolling. Um, and I feel like, you know, uh, if there's anybody that's, as a team, as a whole, that's, close to Alabama and they could go toe-to-toe as far as scoring-wise yeah. with Alabama, I think Clemson would probably Clemson be it. Team. Yeah. Um, yeah. And so we get to the Alabama game, recap of that one. We went to uh, LSU, Death Valley, and took care of business. This was number eight in a row. 
Um, I mean, my prediction was 41-17, and yours was what? Well, I said three touchdowns. Three touchdowns. Yeah, I had said three. I, it would be three. Uh, Alabama would win by three touchdowns. So now, however you want to pick that score. <laughs> so what was your, I guess, defensively, what was your biggest takeaway from the Alabama defense? You know, I feel like we we played with a with a with a tenacity, with a focus, mm -hmm. just really a focus. Yeah. Every play at to, to, and we, we were there to make a statement based on all of the stuff that has been said about Alabama hadn't played anybody really all year. I think it motivated our players, and on defense, we really stepped up and, and made a statement, and we were focused each and every play. Not a lot of breakdowns. You didn't see the breakdowns that mm -hmm. you've seen. Early, and, and it really shows that the team is maturing. The guys on defense yeah. are maturing, and um, we play like that every week. To We're going to be tough to beat. Yeah. And uh, there's just such a level of, uh, of of talent. And when you could take that and get those guys focused with it. I, I just put down, I said, man, Quentin Williams, I, you know, just um, tremendous Can't job. Can't nobody block the dude. <laughs> I mean, they, you got guys bear hugging the dude. They, I mean, <laughs> nobody can block this guy one-on-one. -on -one. They double teams. He beating it. It really doesn't matter. I mean, especially in having a guy in the interior uh, on the line that can get the pressure that he's he's, he's getting. creating, dude. That, that's uh, uh, that's gonna cause headaches for I mean every offense that we play. Does he remind you of Jonathan Allen? A little bit, yeah, <laughs> yeah, yep, yeah. He's uh, he may not I don't think he's quite as big size wise, as, size -wise no, as but Jonathan. his motor, man. Yeah, dude got a motor mm, like yeah, yeah. none other. Christian Miller, yep. really, boy, I tell you, he just. Uh, had a couple of big sacks there also. Mm -hmm. Just put continue to keep that pressure. To me, the thing about defense, the, the guy that gets the ball every down is the quarterback. Yeah. And when you can teach the defense, put pressure on the guy, change the mind of the guy that gets the ball every down. Beat the guy that gets the ball every down. Mm -hmm. You take that guy to the game, then your percentage of chance of winning a game goes up. You take right. You take that uh, take that quarterback out of the game, and uh, so I feel like Christian Miller and and Quinnen just physic. It's just hey man, we're gonna hit you, we're gonna keep hitting you, we're gonna come. You know uh, the whole sixty minutes. Yeah, you about to feel this pressure. Yeah, and that's exactly what the defense did. I mean, my man Quinnen had. I mean, uh, we had two sacks and ten tackles. I think it was two and a half sacks and three and a half uh, for, tackles for, loss. for losses. Dude, yeah. I mean, my man, I mean, but he's been doing this, like, on a consistent Quietly. basis now. Yeah. Quietly. Uh, Dylan Moses went back home and uh, to his home state, mm -hmm. and I thought he played a solid game. Yeah. And you're talking about just a physical uh, talent yep. that, you know, what I like about Dylan, too, is he's quiet. Yeah. He don't say much. And uh, those guys, yeah, work. he just come, yeah, he bring his uh, – Lunch bucket every every in his hard hat every every day and yeah. uh, he's just about getting the job done. I also think that the defense took. I mean, because obviously the offense and offense has been getting a lot of uh, praise, pub, yeah. press, yeah. Um, mm -hmm. and acknowledgement. I think the defense really stepped up and was like, "Look, we we are a big <laughs> part of this team too." You know what I'm saying? So yeah. I think, man, this like you said, they came out trying to make a statement. Well, we, it, it, uh, to me, it's, it's they continue to, uh, in their journey of what they're trying to accomplish uh, with maturity, if they, you know, and that's what I expect, mm -hmm. is that they're going to get better. The defense is going to get better. And so this shutout that we got at LSU, to me, is they're looking for, the expectation is the next team we play, we're going to shut you so out, too. Goose egg. Yeah. So from here throughout the rest of the season, yeah. I think the defense is going to be looking to, to uh, get even better. Yeah. And, I mean, I'll, to kind of switch the gears a little bit, offensively, um, I mean, it wasn't – we didn't score as many points as we're, you know, we're averaging. And I think a lot of that had to do with, you know, L we got to give LSU's LSU. defense yeah. uh, credit. They are a, a good unit. And, um, you know, a lot of – some of the times the timing was off with two and the receivers a little bit, and that comes from them having guys in the secondary that can disrupt uh, the route that the receivers are I running. think you'll see all four 
of those defensive backs playing in the NFL. Now, yeah, I think that was yeah. the best group of defensive backs that we will see all year. Just yep. speed, size, overall, the, you know, they had physicality. The physicality. Mm -hmm. I think that, uh, and then being in a hostile environment, the noise, the stadium, all those things. So I, I felt like uh, to score the points that we did yeah. and uh, to have the efficiency that we had, we, they did a good job overall. Yes, it just took us, I feel like it just took us a little while to get going. Um, and I mean, we obviously we keep praising Tua, but the dude, I mean, just every week, man. I mean, he threw his first interception uh, Saturday, and I mean, the dude is just unconscious with it, though. Like, he, it doesn't matter. I mean, he still, he threw that pick, and I mean, he. I, I, I was telling somebody that the touchdown to Irv Smith. I said, I don't think there's five quarterbacks in the NFL can they make throw that throw. That, make that pass. I watched that ball. That yeah. ball was in a place where only Irv could catch it. Yeah. And there was that was double coverage. Mm -hmm. There was a guy in front of yep. the in front, and there was a, the safety. safety and yep. he put that ball where only Irv could get it. And if you looked at the trajectory of that ball, the tightness of it, I'm sitting there saying, my goodness, yeah. I don't think I've – Probably, you know, the pretty, if I could say the prettiest pass oh, yeah. that I've seen him throw all year. Man, he just continues to impress me. Um, just the way he carries himself uh, in that environment. I mean, and then to, you know. If I could say a, something, about this, you know, I want to say this just for young players that's watching mm -hmm. Alabama. Uh, there's some things to me about Tua that you need to take note of. And the first thing I would say is poise. Yeah. Watch his poise. Not, not only that he's, he's talented, you, you, you're going to see talented players every week. Mm -hmm. But you watch his poise, and that is how does he respond in, in difficult situations? How does he respond? Uh, you know, there was uh, – he was hit in the first quarter yeah. there and, 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 and had to come out of the game. Yeah. And you watch how – how he, how, how player he respond? That. How does mm -hmm. player respond? And you younger players, that, that's one of the things that when you're watching the game – that you can take note of is how a guy responds and, and what type of poise, because that's really what's going to separate and make uh, a player a champion or not a champion. Yeah, because, he, I mean, he, honestly, he handled it better than me because when I saw it, you know, they blew the whistle, but I don't think the defenders could hear it. You know, Del Pitt hit him low, and I'm like, man, what the, you know, <laughs> man, I'm sitting there like, man, come on, man. You can't be hitting our dude low like that. I mean, and uh, it was a false start on us. So, I mean, it was basically a free shot on tour and I mean like you said man he just handles him he just carries himself in such a way that I mean it's really cool. younger players need to make a note of that yeah. and say hey I want to be a person that as an athlete when I'm in in, in competition I'm going to have tremendous pause about myself and uh, that's really what and I think that carries over and it it af it affects the entire the team, rest of the team it yeah. affects yeah. the rest of the team not just offense but the entire team. Yeah. And I'll tell you, there was, uh, if you watch the game, I got to go back to defense real quick. Man. Go ahead. <laughs> if you watch the game when Tua threw the interception mm -hmm. and the defense trotted on the field and you watch those guys, they were jumping up and down the D line yeah. saying, bring it on. Yeah. Bring it on. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, and I, we almost got a safety. Yeah. Anthony Jennings uh, ended up getting uh, the sack. So. I mean, man. It's, but that it's, says something to the opposing offense. Man, these guys are jumping up now. They're happy that there was a turnover. <laughs> <laughs> they get the chance to hey, come back and get on the field. field. Yeah. yeah. They're not sitting there uh, saying, man, he, th he threw an interception. No, Dog, we got to go back. They're sitting there literally. Uh, man, it's time for us to eat now. Yeah. <laughs> Excited about being able to get in the yeah. game and, and have a turnover. That's what you want. That's what you want. Now, offense, they almost put up 600 yards of offense. Um, I mean, 281 rushing, I think, um, and I mean, just overall, the offense man has been clicking. I don't feel like we've had a better group of receivers, top to bottom, than we have right now. Um, and it's, I mean, it's gonna be fun to watch uh, throughout the season. So I'm looking forward to it. Uh, let's go ahead and look at some of these upcoming games. We well, got that takeaway. What, so what's your takeaway from? Saturday, take away. I, what, what? For me, um, honestly, I think what this game did for us as far as confidence-wise and having played 
LSU being the toughest game that we play at their uh, at their home turf. For me, I feel like it just made a statement that we don't care about what the press is saying. We don't care about everybody else giving us all of this praise or saying that we haven't played anybody this, or this that, and the third. It doesn't matter. It's about our team, our locker room, and taking care of business. And that was, that was pretty much my takeaway from it. I wrote down, and my takeaway was I, I watched overall. I felt I'm, I've really been impressed with our defensive front. Mm-hmm. And uh, I've watched uh, Isaiah Bugs. I mean, he, you know, he was heavier last year. And I was yeah. sharing this kind of with you earlier. When you look at our de- defensive front, I, I feel like that uh, those guys are sleeker, faster. And so, you know, my takeaway is that, man, we're, we're skilled, mm-hmm. focused, and mature. Yeah, and uh, when you have a team, especially on defense, that is, if if those are some of their attributes, they're gonna they're gonna be championship caliber. They're gonna be very difficult to beat. Yeah, I mean, I couldn't agree more. Couldn't agree more. Uh, So we got coming up this week. We got some good ones. Um, Georgia and Auburn gonna be a good one. Um, What you think about that that matchup? I like I like Georgia. Are you sure? Yes. (laughs) <laughs> After watching their running backs last week. Yeah. I mean, they got a one two Swift. punch between uh, Holyfield and, and Swift, Swift, man. Yes. I mean, I, those are two of the top backs in the nation. That backfield right there is tough. Well, they hadn't, you know, you look at the guy who was drafted uh, this past spring and they hadn't had any fall off from their running no, running game. No. I'm, I mean, I'm with you. I think George is going to take care of business. But, I mean, look, the run that Auburn went on last year, I mean, we – you never know. Well, I just think Georgia's defense. I think they're going to they play great defense. They're playing, uh, they're playing at Georgia. Are they playing at yeah, Georgia? It's at yeah, Georgia. I, well, I think Georgia will end up Yeah, I think they're going to take yeah, care of business. Yeah, and I think they got their favorite by two touchdowns. Yeah, I, I mean, look, that'll put Auburn at six and four, and people will be back off the Gus bus. <laughs> <laughs> so we'll, we'll see. They still got to play the game, though. Um, then we got uh, Clemson. I think this Boston is going to be college. a big, big test for them. They're going to Boston College. Um, I still think Clemson is going to roll, though. Uh, the way that their offense has been clicking the past couple of weeks, um, I don't think that Boston College is going to be able to go toe-to-toe with them. I agree with you. I just Clemson has more manpower. Too much manpower. Yeah, too, much, too much manpower. They, they can run the ball. They can throw it. Yeah. Yeah. Um, who we got next? Ohio State, Ohio Michigan State. State. Okay. Uh, it's all according who show up for Ohio State. That, Which team show up? That's what I'm saying. I want to go Ohio State. <laughs> Their favorite. Yeah, I, I think I'm gonna give them the nod, the nod on this one. I, I, I I'm gonna pick Ohio State. I think State. I think they'll they'll show up. I think they're hitting the, they you know, adversity. Matures your team, and I think that early in the year, early some of the, loss yeah, there. early loss, they they realize, okay, we've got, and I think they're maturing and they're they're coming along, and they have the physical talent to. I don't think uh, Michigan State can can match them. Okay, yeah. I mean, I I'll take Ohio State in that one too. I think I think you're right. They, I don't think that Michigan State can go toe to toe with them. Um, Kentucky, Tennessee. Why are we even talking? About this? <laughs> Kentucky, Tennessee. Um, I really, honestly, and I'm gonna be honest right here. I, I mean, I wouldn't mind if Tennessee lost every game they played. <laughs> so I'm gonna go ahead and pick Kentucky just for that fact. <laughs> I actually think Tennessee will end up winning you this game. You think so? Yes. Man, yeah. Well, yeah. you got to give your coach now, Jeremy Pruitt. You got to give I know him coach some. Coach Pruitt coached me yeah. and all of that. He was at Alabama, but. <laughs> Look, he at Tennessee now, so I mean, I appreciate you, Coach, but I can't rock with that orange. I can't, so I'm gonna go with Kentucky on this one. I, I think you'll see an upset there. I, I think Tennessee is in prime right. upset. Well, we'll, well see. They, they beat Auburn, so okay. Uh, yeah. Uh, so then we got Bama and State. Um, Obviously, we're going to roll with the home team. Well, I'm going to roll with the whole t- home team. But I will say this. Mississippi State, is. I feel like they're one of those teams. Between Mississippi State and LSU, those are the two 
hardest, hardest most physical yeah. games that I feel like that we play year in and year yeah. out. My, I mean, just the physicality of that game. Man, Mississippi State, they always play hard, always. Well, they can line up with Alabama. They can line up physically, you know, man to man. It's, yeah. They just physically size wise. Yeah. So what's your, what's your pick? What's your prediction? I'm not gonna pick. I'm not, I'm not just gonna, gonna pick. No. Huh? Well, uh, I'll pick. For, I'm gonna get out of for us. <laughs> the tie gonna roll. They ain't got enough cowbells that can stop the offense, in my opinion. So um, I think I'm gonna make it down there for this one as well uh, to see it in person. So. Um, I think the tide gonna keep on rolling, uh, but it's, it's definitely gonna be a good test. Their defense is um, is legit, uh, but I, honestly, man, if Tua stays healthy, I think it's. I mean, we're gonna be tough to beat. Yeah, I agree with that on that. Tough uh, to so we need to get him back healthy and Jalen back healthy also. Yeah, we definitely. Some of our receivers, Devontae Smith, need you know get him back. A little banged up. Yeah, a little banged up, a little healthy, and uh, so we just. Um, I feel good about the rest of the year and uh, going into the uh, SEC championship game. Well, um, when you do chapel this Saturday, will you tell Tua not to do any more celebrations where he's jumping up in the air and landing on his knee? Okay, (laughs) we can't have no more semi-heart attacks because when I saw that, I was like, dude, are you kidding me? My man hurt his knee. After a 45-yard touchdown, he hurt his knee trying to jump and celebrate with somebody. <laughs> so we, we don't need no more of those scares. But, uh, yeah, I think the tide's going to roll. Um, I'm looking forward to the weekend of football that we got coming up. Uh, it, it should be a good one. It should be a good game. Yeah. yeah. Well, we've enjoyed it. we uh glad that you all could join in with us on it. And uh, remember, at the Men of Steel, We walk by faith, not by sight. And remember, you can always just get a little bit better. Thanks for tuning in. We'll see you next week. God bless.